Good morning, Bimblers. And you join me here at Cholton Come Hardy. And we're at the intersection between Wilbraham Road and Keppel Road. Keppel Road is where the Bee Gees were brought up. The Brothers Gibb. You know, staying alive and all that. And it's also where Quentin Crisp died of a heart attack. But we're not looking around Charlton today. We're going down the Fallowfield Loop. So let's stop messing about. And let's bimble. By Jove, it's cold this morning, Bimblers. But we soldier on. It's not raining and it's not blowing a gale. So we can bimble. And we're bimbling down the Fallowfield Loop line. And it was designed to give access to Manchester Central for the trains on the Manchester, Sheffield and Lincolnshire Railway. Apparently the people who own the main line made it quite difficult to get your trains into Manchester Central. It took the second largest joint railway group in the UK to build the Fallowfield Loop Line and get all those trains into Manchester Central. If you're on a cycle path in the North West that used to be a railway, chances are it's a Cheshire Lines Committee railway. They all seem to have been made into cycle paths. But the Fallowfield Loop Line opened in 1892 and the first section to be finished was a section between Charlton Cum Hardy, which is where we started today's bimble, and Fallowfield, which is our next port of call. There were five stations on the line. That would be Hyde Road, Levens Hume South, Fallowfield, Charlton Cum Hardy, and where we are now, Wilbraham Road. Whereas it would have been called when it was first opened, Alexandra Park, but it went by another name, in 1964, Granada Television named it Cholsonville Station, which isn't very factually correct. Cholsonville is back down in Cholton. It's a housing estate built in 1910 and 1911. We're going to talk all about it in an upcoming National Cycle Route 62 video at some point in 2023, hopefully. But Granada Television dubbed the station Cholsonville for a programme called Blues and Gospel Train and would you believe it that Sister Rosetta Tharp and Muddy Waters played at this station for that programme and they did it all out like it was a Deep South station and loads of these young kids came on trains and watched Muddy Waters play on this cycle path or a railway as it would have been at the time in 1964 it would have been six years since a passenger train went down the line it was only used for freight so I suppose that's why they were allowed to film something on the station and in 1988 they closed the line completely and they ripped up the tracks and they left it derelict up until 2001 I wish I'd have come and had a walk down it but it was very interesting but in 2001 they made it into a cycle path for us bimblers and it makes up part of National Cycle Route 6 and part of National Cycle Route 60 and it goes all the way into Gorton which is where we're going so let's bimble take the blue skies and I'll take the grey
So we reach Fallowfield. And just over there, the Sainsbury's and the Starbucks. That used to be Fallowfield Station. Fallowfield's where all the young'uns live. All the students. All the posh girls from Bristol. And the roly smoking lads from Norwich. It reminds me of a conversation I overheard in a chip shop in Conway. Two American students. They hadn't met before. And they both gone on the same coach trip to go and see Conway Castle. And it turned out that they both lived in Fallowfield. And it was quite odd to hear two Americans going on about Abdul's and Weatherspoons and Alan's fried chicken. And just like they came over to the UK to be educated, Raymond Allen went over to the US to be educated. He became the first person in the UK to open a KFC franchise and he met the colonel while he was over there. He had a handwritten piece of paper that had the secret recipe for the colonel's chicken. The secret 11 herbs and spices. Raymond Allen had a copy of it in a safe in his shop. Apparently Raymond had several wimpy restaurants in Preston and he converted one of those restaurants into the new KFC, which is a waste of a wimpy if you ask me. Never been impressed by KFC. And in the end, I don't think Raymond Allen was. He ended up making his millions and leaving KFC and setting up his own fried chicken company, Allen's Fried Chicken. And he opened several restaurants, including one in Latchford Village at one point, you know, over in Warrington where I live. Brick closed and became Latchford Kebab House, which is the way it should be. So is Allen's Fried Chicken Fallowfield's fast food claim to fame? No. Fallowfield's fast food claim to fame is the McDonald's over there. It was the UK's first drive through McDonald's. Fascinating stuff. But does Fallowfield have any, you know, actual history? Well, we have to go to Platfields to see that. Let's bimble. This is Platfields Park, and nestled in Platfields Park are two little historical treasures. The first one is an archway from Manchester Cathedral. It would seem when they were doing up the cathedral, they got rid of one of the archways. It was an archway from the nave, that's the bit where the congregation sits. A man named Samuel Mendel bought the archway, or was given it, and he put it on display in his garden at his home at Manly House. Samuel Mendel made his riches as a merchant in Liverpool. And his big claim to fame was how quickly he could get goods around Africa. In those days you had to go all the way around the bottom of Africa to get your goods from Asia into Europe. But in 1875 it all started going wrong for him. They built the Suez Canal and everyone was just using that. So he lost his edge. 
and he ended up having to auction off loads of his belongings and one of the belongings must have been the archway from Manchester Cathedral the people who lived in Ashfield House here in Fallowfield must have bought it Ashfield House is now part of Platfield Park and Platfield Park used to be the Platt Hall Estate which is where the Worsley family lived for about 300 years and it was eventually donated to Manchester Council anyway next to that cathedral arch is something called the Nico Ditch or the Mickle Ditch if you're a monk from Gorton it's a 5th century earthwork and no one's quite sure why it was dug some people like me believe it was dug as a boundary marker marking out the boundary between Northumbria and Mercia if you look on a map where the Nico Ditch goes it stretches all the way from Stretford to Gorton and at Stretford the River Mersey takes a dip southwards and the River Mersey would have been the boundary marker from Liverpool to Manchester other more romantic people believe that the ditch was dug overnight in preparation for a battle and some people believe that's where Reddish gets its name in Manchester meaning Red Ditch literally a ditch full of blood from a battle but then other people believe it means Reedy Ditch because the Nico Ditch would have been overgrown and full of reeds who knows there's one very special place where the Nico Ditch isn't overgrown it's rather smartly kept let's bimble Maybe it didn't work at the time Maybe it never did A mistake that made the distance Or a trying way to live Maybe it's the time that you grabbed at my arms And electricity flowed from my shoulders to palms In a white hot glow leaving white cold scars Left fair and on show just to prove they were ours Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is Maybe it didn't work at the time Maybe it never did A novelty improvement Left lonely as it gave Maybe it's the time that you closed both your eyes And you pouted your lips as you waited for mine In the soft red glow of your soft cold arms Serotonin burnt holes through my veins to my heart Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is Maybe it's the time that I wanted to say That my limbs won't move more than two feet away From your day glow side luminescent sparks I could burst into flames from one beat from your heart Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is And I quite like how it is
This rather posh looking stream here in Gorton Cemetery is in fact the Nico Ditch. Obviously they've tarted it up a lot and they've put a plaque up. You can't have an horrible old ditch running through your cemetery, can you? That would upset the mourners. Anyway, onwards and upwards, let's bimble. And so we reach Journey's End, Gorton Reservoir. And it's one of the few reservoirs around here. You've got Audenshaw Reservoir. That's massive. It's over there somewhere. You're not allowed in though. You even have the Secret Lake, which is in Levenshume. And that used to be a reservoir. I think for some of the factories around here. But it's just a normal lake now that you can walk your dog around. We nearly visited it, but I chose to come to Gorton Reservoir instead. Gorton Reservoir was built by the Manchester and Salford Water Company. And it split into two halves, upper and lower. And one was made in 1825, and the other in 1826. But I'm not sure which way round it was. But both reservoirs together make up the first municipal reservoir in the UK. It was run by the council. And it was all supposed to feed all them cotton mills in Manchester. It can provide 1 million gallons of water a day. Or 4.5 million litres of water for us people that do metric. But it hasn't been pressed into service since 1963. They let that big one at Audenshaw do it now. It's all fed by the Gore Brook, which is where Gorton gets its name from. Gore Town. And the Gore Brook flows into the upper reservoir and the lower reservoir flows into the Cholton Brook and goes all the way back to Cholton Cum Hardy where we started the bimble today. And it goes past Choltonville and into the River Mersey which is where I should be heading now. <laughs> 